In this video, we're going to cover the dehancer workflow. It'll make your footage go from this to this. In case this is your first time here, I'm Fred Trevino. I've been a professional colorist for 15 years for Beambox Studio. I've graded over 60 feature length films and I've graded hundreds of short form projects for companies like ESPN, Google, HBO, Under Armour, just to name a few. This workflow is my workflow. It's very flexible and you can use it for anything from 30 second beauty spots to two hour feature length films. It's a great starting point, so let's jump right in. Okay, so here we are again. I'm going to show you my personal workflow using the Dehancer plugin. One thing I wanna say right off the bat is that this is my personal workflow and things will vary based on your camera, based on your grading hardware, based on your timeline, based on the look you're going for, but I would say this is a good starting point. So here we are. So again, one of the most important factors when you're working with Dehancer is what camera are you using? This camera here is the Fujifilm X-H2 and it is shot in F-Log, which is the why it has that very washed out look. So the first thing we're gonna do is project setup. So I go into the color management settings and my preferred way of working is under color processing mode, setting it to HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. Um, now this won't be a, a deep dive into color management by any means, but this, I set this up due to my grading environment and my hardware and my grading suite. Uh, so for output color space, I have that set to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, which is what my grading monitor is set to. And this I find is a great way to start any project because this will basically read the metadata of the cameras in the project and it will automatically do a color space transform to take it out of a log environment and it's just a great way to grade in a much wider gamut that's great for when you're using multiple cameras things like that which is something that i very commonly work with but again if you are a beginner with color management i would say this is a great place to start so that's where i have mindset to and then I will cancel that because it's set. And then the next thing that I do, because as I said, that color management setting, you know, one of the great benefits of it is that it reads the metadata of your camera and will automatically take it out of log. It does that with some cameras, but not every camera. It does not do it with this Fuji camera. So if your camera happens to be one of those, then you simply select the media, right click, go into input color space you can see what the default is and then you can go to your camera you can see they have all different varieties here in my case fujifilm and i'm going to go to fujifilm f-log and you can see it applies that transform to take it out of the flat log look and now we're in a good starting place to begin and then from here to begin the grading i will always add an additional node move that to the very end open up my effects and then I'll just drop my dehancer plugin on top and you can see it looks like this because there's no adjustments made and then here based on my color management workflows I go and switch to DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate as my starting place I could go here to choose camera Fuji XH2S F-Log, which is how it was shot. But then you can see it actually, the results end up being something of a, you know, similar to double applying a LUT to something. There's no LUTs applied here, but that's just the kind of the effect you have. Um, so if I chose my workflow to be, to just go this route, then I would have gone here and just bypass the color management. That way it does not sort of do a doubling up of taking the footage out of log. But again, that was just kind of to show you a different workflow, but I'm actually gonna turn this off and stick with this here. And you can see we go from here to here. And then the next thing I do from here, I mean, I mean, really from here, it, it's really dependent on the look we're after, okay? And also fixing the footage. Like in this case, it is overexposed. So, you know, I'll go here and then the few things that I typically adjust initially, and, and this is partly based on the recommendations of the Dehancer manual, is I will typically go in and 
something that I find, you know, as, as far as the color profile here that you use, you know, I found that some of these work better and look better dependent on the camera. So the Fuji cameras, for example, I find, you know, one of my go-tos is sticking with Fuji and going to Fuji Eterna Vivid 500. But what that does, you know, in my opinion, is it applies a film look to the footage while still kind of maintaining the look of how it was actually shot on set. So it doesn't go in there and, you know, completely alter everything. You know, like if I added something completely different, you know, I wouldn't want to completely change how it was shot. And you could say this stays kind of true to the original image in terms of the color and the look of it. So usually I apply, I, I choose my film stock dependent on the look that I'm going for. And then from there, yeah, I mean, you can see this is a pretty decent transfer over. And then normally one of the first things that I do is adjust the black point. So we can see here her hair is a little bit kind of washed out and that's not really the look I'm going for. So I'm just gonna kinda, and some of you have asked before, I do have scopes, but they're not on the screen. They're on a separate monitor running on a separate system. So, but I'm kind of looking at the scopes and also trusting my eye and trusting my monitor. So I'm going to choose that for my black point. And then from here, I usually second, I, you know, go to exposure. This is, you know, and then I play with the look. So let's say we want to make this a little bit of a higher key kind of look. So I'll maybe just bring this up a little bit. And then something that I also do right off the bat, which I'm noticing is kind of affecting it now, is I tend to turn off this film grain pretty early in the process, if not at the very beginning. And it's just because all of that grain, you know, really affects the look, okay? So I tend to just turn it off so I have a clean image to look at and I know, you know, exactly what I'm getting. So you can see just by turning that off, I actually wanna go up here and maybe play with the exposure a touch more. I'm actually gonna bring it down a tiny bit there. And then something that I love working with as well is, you know, right now this image to me is just, you know, let's just say we wanna go with kind of like a brighter commercial look, but at the same time with kind of a film stock look to it. Uh, right now this whole shot just looks way too overexposed and also very desaturated. So let's jump right into that and fix it. And you know, that just goes to saying that, you know, it's, there's no magic formula of what you wanna do with this on every clip. There's just very general guidelines based on the look you're going for. In this case, it is, you know, a brighter commercial look that I'm going for with a kind of cinematic kind of look to it. So from there, you know, based on the fact that I think this just kind of looks too bright and too desaturated, I'm going to go into the film compression, which is something I use a lot. And what film compression does is it takes away a very bright digital look to the highlights. So if I turn this on, you can see what a difference that does. So it immediately brings up all the bright areas that are kind of blown out and it brings those down. And just by bringing those down, you can see some of that, con some of that contrast and saturation come back to the image, okay? And again, feel free to make adjustments here. And you know, just to not make this video 30 minutes long because it could very easily get super long, I'm going to kind of hold back on, you know, getting meticulous with all of these adjustments. But you could, you know, go in here and adjust how much the impact, how much of the film compression it's applying, um, where your white point lands, which affects how it's set. I'm gonna leave these as the default settings Okay, and so, so far we've ex we've adjusted the expand, we've applied our Fujifilm Eterna LUT, and we've just kind of tweaked the exposure a little bit. And then next, you know, under Film Developer, I love using this as well, I'll turn this on, and, you know, I wanna give this a very sort of film-like saturation. Turning on Film Developer, and then using the Color Boost, is a great way to do that in the dehancer. There's a million ways to do this. You can see a ton of videos on YouTube about it, but in dehancer, this is one way to do it within the plugin. There's also the HDR tools, the global saturation. There's also the HSV way of doing it, which is popular. But in this case, we're gonna do this color boost and 
look how great it makes the saturation just come up. And there we go. I think now we're finally getting somewhere. And you can see it adds this very nice, vibrant, film-like saturation. So I'm going to start there. And so just by bringing all of this color in, you know, you start seeing other things like I want this to have a kind of warmer look to it, okay? So, you know, let's kind of rewind a little bit. We've adjusted the exposure. We've set the source of the input. Um, we've applied color boost. We're using the Fuji Eternal LUT film compression. We've set our black point. This I will leave as linear. Um, I am not going to apply any sort of Fuji film print stocks or Kodak film stocks. I'm sticking with the linear profile and film grain. I typically add this at the very end once I have the look set and I'm happy with it. And then I just apply that layer of grain at the top. The same thing goes with the halation, the bloom. I rarely use film damage because it's just kind of like a cheesy thing unless a director asks for it and they want that kind of hairs and all that kind of dirt in the look. Same thing with film breath. Uh, which is kind of, you know, with film stock as it's running through a projector and you kind of get that kind of sort of jittery, slight exposure and color adjustments happen. That's what this does here. And the same thing with gate weave. It's a physical thing with the projector where the, you know, film is kind of vibrating and shaking through the projector. This is cool, but again, I've never had the reason to use it and you might see similar things that's basically where you can see the sprockets and things like that but and then vignette this has a very nice vignette tool but again i just personally have my own kind of presets and like doing vignettes in the resolve tool so that's really what i'm mainly doing right now for this look and now that i have kind of the base set and you know this is where it started with the input color space adjusted to Fujifilm F-Log. And that's what the Dehancer adjustments right there. But so you can see it makes a big difference. And I'll go ahead and just name this one. And then once I have the base look set, then I go to my first node and make further adjustments. So again, the look, I want this to be a little bit warmer. I want it to be vibrant. I want it to be very much like a commercial. And so I am now just going to go in here. And the first thing I'm gonna do here, luminance for that kind of project, you know, it really depends on the look. Some people might want, and I'll give you options here, might want a darker, look for a commercial piece. Some people might really want, they just love brightness and they might want to really brighten it up and really saturate things. And so for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for something that's just like a hair brighter like that. And then I'm also going to drop the lift a little bit. And again, you can see down here, I'm using my control panel. Sorry about that. I'll try to remember to use the tools down here. So you can see exactly what I'm doing. But what I did here is basically just adjusted the global exposure. Okay, and so that's just kind of a, it was a very, you know, this was a very subtle adjustment. And then I'm gonna go here, create an additional node, and I am going to warm up this shot because we really wanna see the gold in her dress and her skin tones. And again, commercial pieces love saturation, so I'll do that. And then I'm gonna do a parallel node. So in conjunction or in parallel with this one, I am going to make adjustments to the sky. There we go, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a boost just so there's a little bit more separation. And then I'm actually going to also play with changing the hue of the sky just to see what happens. So, a little deeper blue or I can go, you know, I might go like this. I think I'm gonna go with that kind of sky there just cause it looks a little bit more like film whereas the other one looked just a little bit more digital bright blue, you know, and we're going the sky from here to here. I think this kind of teal kind of look looks a little bit more interesting. Kind of rewind this here and let's play this in full screen to see how it looks. This is a slow motion shot by the way. 
So I think, you know, it's looking good. And then normally when, you know, I get it to a good place like that is when I go back into Dehancer and then I start adding in things like the film grain. I'm a fan of very subtle grain. So I typically like starting on the 65 millimeter ISO 50. There's the default grain. There's no grain. And I like just this very kind of fine grain here that you can see playing through. There we go. So I think that's a good level of grain. And then from here, I just kind of play with the, I don't know, this, this lens seems to already have some kind of nice blooming highlights, but let's just see what this does to it. Okay, and I don't think that does much. And again, I could maybe soften it, which I will add the bloom to soften things up. Again, just because beauty videos tend to like this sort of softness. So that's without it. Bloom added before, after, and you can see it adds this kind of softness to the edges and the highlights and a kind of glowy kind of look to it. Again, before the bloom, after. There we go. And I think that's pretty much all I will do with this clip here. You know, we went through and did the dehancer settings and then kind of the base settings, which was very subtle. And then the warmth, the sky, And there you go. This is a good kind of starting point for this sort of look. And you can see these are my kind of default dehancer workflow. It's been a video that's been asked for for a long time, so I just thought I'd put it out there. And if you haven't seen my other review of dehancer, you can check it out up there. Okay, so that's the video. You can see it's a very basic guidelines to get started with dehancer. Use this on all your projects. Any questions, ask below. And again, like, subscribe, and I'll see y'all later.